Pastor Hudson, I'm delighted that you're with me today. And today we're going to do a devotion from the book of Psalms, chapter 5 and verse number 6. Psalms chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Today we're going to speak on the first part of that verse for devotion, on thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Leasing is a, a word to mean a lie or falsehood or truth. Uh, let me give you 15 of the most famous American lies. Number one, the check is in the mail. Number two, we service what we sell. Number three, give me your number and the doctor will call you right back. Money cheerfully refunded. This offer is limited to the first 100 people who call in. Your luggage isn't lost, it's only misplaced. You leave your resume and we'll keep it on file. Your table will be ready in five minutes. Open wide, it won't hurt a bit. It's not the money, it's the principle. Let's have lunch sometime and I'll start my diet tomorrow. And number 15 is one size fits all. There are those who say, I said, but I didn't say. There's those who will say, I told a little white lie. And some will say, I only told a half truth, but it's still a lie. And you see, there are those people who can look you straight in the eye and tell you what we would call a bold-faced lie with no remorse. These people have no problem with their conscience because they have absolutely learned to look out for themselves and for no one else. Lying does seem to be a way of life for many of the people. Many people draw, lie at the drop of a hat. The book, The Day American Told the Truth, says that 91% of those surveyed lie routinely about matters they consider trivial, and 36% lie about important matters, 86% lie regularly to their parents, 75% lie to their friends, 73% lie to their siblings, and 69% lie to their spouses. You see, when you talk about people who are leasing, these people who speak this thing is they are sucked up into innocent falsehood. They're unconcerned when the results of their unremorseful lying has shielded them from the consequences that others have to endure. Perhaps this is why gossip is such a dangerous conversation to find oneself in because it is often a bold-faced lie wrapped around shreds of truth. In the previous chapter of Psalms, the Bible actually says that there are those that seek after leasing or falsehood. It is one thing when lies find you, but it's totally another when you become comfortable with lies and become what we would consider a liar. My mother told me several times to be careful with the company you keep because they can either help you or hurt you, and you will become like them. The interesting thing in Isaiah 59, verse 3 through 5, God said, For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath pleadeth for truth, hath muttered perverseness, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. And this is what they're doing. They hatch a cockatrice egg and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Psalms chapter 62 and verse 4 says, They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. See law. Jesus one day was speaking to people, the men of that day, and he said, Well, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In Hosea chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, and in the multitude of thy mighty men. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 31 says, O, oh, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and they shall be filled with their own devices. Oh, what do we do and how do we handle these lies and people that tell lies and do so so effortlessly? Well, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Bible also says in John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness, or they loved lies, untruths, rather than light, which is truth, and holiness because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved one man said um, asked them said what is the opposite of evil for the Christian and they said well the opposite of evil is good but really the opposite of evil is found in verse number 21 of John chapter 3 when he says but he that doeth the truth he that telleth the truth, liveth the truth, embodies the truth, cometh to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. Because God will destroy the works of those who tell lies. We should keep our hands from taking action against them and let God have his way. We should heed the words, what Jesus said, that their words are evil and they are followed by their deeds. We should not do good, but we should do truth. Truth shall be revealed in time. We should consider the words of the psalmist in Psalm chapter 73, who was nearly caught up in a web of lies. Psalm 73 and 2 said, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, and my steps had well nigh slipped. From verse 2 to verse 17, the Bible says that he weaved this tale, and he weaved this thing, and it was a bunch of lies that the enemy was having him to believe. But verse 17 tells the story of the truth. He found the only place where he could find truth, and that is in the sanctuary of God. Psalm 73 and 17 says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou cast them down into destruction. God did this. You see, if you can do truth, live for God, tell the truth. Uh, one writer said, to thine own self, be true. Uh, and one said, oh, what a tangled web we weave when we begin to practice to deceive. Tell the truth. Because once you begin to tell one lie, you have to back that lie with another lie. And you have to build a complete lie. And you have to remember every lie that you told so that you don't tell the same lie twice. Better to tell the truth. Psalms 19, how are they brought to utter desolation as in a moment that are utterly consumed with terror? As a dream when one waketh, so, O Lord, when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. How do we handle lies? Time will tell. Time will tell. Trust the Lord, listen for truth, and love the truth. You see, when uh, bankers are taught to tell real money, they're not given false money to figure it out. They give them a real dollar bill. They give them real correct currency and they learn the feeling of that currency. They learn what it feels like, what it looks like, and I believe maybe what it smells like. But they learn it and they know it. If you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to help you, the Lord will guide you and instruct you, not our conscience, but the Spirit of God. And if we we'll allow the Lord to speak to our conscience, then we will not tell lies and we will tell truth. Remember, if you tell a lie, you have to cover it up. But if you tell the truth, the truth shall stand. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray today for those that are listening that you would help us to understand, God, that you do not approve of liars. You don't approve of lies. You don't approve of, the, of, uh, of uh, untruths, Lord Jesus. But you approve of those who tell the truth who live for you, who walk in truth, God, who come to you, Lord Jesus. I pray today, God, that somebody will not be afraid to come to you, Lord Jesus, and they will repent of their sins, God, and they will be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives an utterance, and they will get baptized in Jesus' name, and they will be filled with the Spirit of truth, Lord Jesus. I pray for someone today, God, if they have been telling lies, Lord Jesus, or telling untruths, God, and their conscience is convicting them, God, I pray they will find a place and repent and cast them upon you, Lord Jesus, and rise in newness of life and turn around and do not tell lies again, but to walk in truth. Lead us by your spirit, Lord God, and help us to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning for the conclusion of this devotion on Psalms chapter 5 and verse 6. Have a truth-filled day led by the Spirit of Christ.